I am so excited to start the new year off with a brand new book, a debut novel. I read this book, I mean, by the looks of the way it's bent and twisted around in stains with coffee, I would say sometime in the summer. Um, it's called The Au Pair. It's by Emma Rose. It's out just now. Emma grew up in England, Indonesia, Kuwait, Portugal, and Fiji. Have you been to Rhode Island, Emma? <laughs> I have never been to Rhode Island, I'm afraid, well, not yet. <laughs> there you go. I haven't been to Indonesia, Kuwait, Fiji. Um, and from a young age, she had two ambitions, to write stories and to look after animals, like two of my favorite things ever. Emma studied veterinary medicine and zoology at the University of Cambridge, then worked as a small animal veterinarian surgeon for 18 years before switching to a full-time writing career just a few years ago. Emma lives in Cambridgeshire, England, with her husband and three sons. As I said, The Au Pair is her first novel. Don't go firing yours so quick. That was the first thing I saw. When I saw the title, I was like, oh, boy, is everyone going to go firing the help? It will be published in 10 countries, nine languages, and we're very excited that she's currently writing her second book. Thrilled to have you on. Welcome to Reading with Robin. Emma. Thank you very much, Robin. I'm really happy to be here. I was so excited when this, uh, a pleasure to have you, when this book arrived, I think it was the summer. I, it feels like such a long time ago. And I just curled up with it and nobody saw me until I was finished. And it, it's such an amazing ride for so many reasons. And then I was reading about you and I'm like, she's a vet and a writer, and is there a better combo? I mean, talk about that. Let's start there. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's slightly, I think it seems to be one of the things that people are quite intrigued by because they're two quite different things. Um, Ish. I think I always wanted to be a writer, right, from when I was, you know, before I can remember, really, when I was a very small child. I just wanted mm -hmm. to write stories. Um, but I think as a teenager when I was at school, I loved English, but I loved maths and sciences as well. And, I, and because of that, that I, I had this real desire to work with animals, and it just seemed easier. <laughs> and, you know, once you're on a veterinary course, you're, you know, once you're on the course, you, it's a conveyor belt, really. You're kind of pretty much guaranteed to come out sure. the other end with a, a career, whereas becoming a writer just seemed much more nebulous and difficult. And That's so interesting. I think veterinary school is like the hardest thing ever to get into, from what I remember, with yeah, my friends. That's, that's, that one obstacle at the beginning, yes. Yeah, this is that one little thing. You're so humble. I love that, too. I mean, this, you know, we're just such animal people, and I've had so many shows with authors where the books revolve around, you know, in some way pets or the authors are animal lovers, or, you know, so yes. there's that that connection. And then books um, that that have that at its center. Well, some of those I actually can't read. I actually, I really don't have any desire. Nothing can happen mm -hmm. to an animal in a book or, uh, you know, movie. I have a hard time, time with that. Yeah, but I think it's, um, like you say, talking about writing as a career, which it is, and a job. And there was just, I just actually read Pamela Paul's article in New York Times about what the average salary is you know it's not as glamorous as people think yeah. your deal was amazing <laughs> which is yeah. out there two book deal which was just incredible so i you know so it doesn't always go like that in fact most often it, it doesn't so in a practical yeah. way you know taking yeah. the veterinary route was was a practical and how do how do animals and your love of them work into your writing i think i, I was quite conscious when i started writing that i didn't want to write a story centred around you know, a vet or a veterinary practice or animals, um, sure. partly just because I just felt um, not so much that it would be the easy route, but it just felt that it would be, I wanted to, um, it might be what people would expect, and I exactly. wanted to try something slightly different, but I feel like I could, you know, hold that in reserve for the future. Um, oh, please do. <laughs> please hold it. <laughs> yeah, right, I people would... Idea. Right, because then what happens is they're like, is this you? It's not really you. Yeah, are, you yeah, know, is exactly. this the, are you the vet in the story? And for more information, go to Emma's website, which is <laughs> emmaroos.com. You also have a Facebook page. How do you feel about all of the upkeep on social media surrounding think, the publication of the book? Yeah, on the whole, very positive. I think it's been um, a real learning curve for me. So I joined... Well, I set up an author Facebook page and joined Instagram and joined Twitter when I was oh, starting to great. write. Sure. And, um, yeah, I, so I think it's, it's um, 
very supportive. I've had a lot of lovely messages, especially on Instagram. Yeah, really Instagram seems to be, yeah. Leaders. People are really there. It's, it's, I think yeah. people initially were not quite sure how to incorporate that, but as far as Instagramming with, you know, bookstagramming and getting yeah. in touch with readers, there are so many wonderful places to be there. It seems to be really productive, like it can be very productive. And then, yes. you know, there's the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it can be of hours Instagram. of following one, one link to another. But it's I was really very surprised scary. Yeah. by that, yeah. But I think sometimes I've had, I have had a period of time, um, probably in the last few weeks actually, leading up to publication day, which is tomorrow. In the I States. know, yes. Um, which is very exciting. And I, I've had a period of time, especially because I am still working on book two. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of doing bits of marketing for book one and then trying to actually write book two, which I love doing so much that I could just disappear for hours in my head doing that. Um, sure. Where I'll, if I look on the social media and I, mm-hmm. I see those little notifications, and I've got so many on Twitter, so many on Instagram, so many on Facebook, and I, I get kind of paralysed and I can't, you know, I don't want to interact with it. But I'm actually, I think that's just a, a learning curve because I've never had that before. So I'm hoping. <laughs> well, if I have any answers for you at some level, I'll figure <laughs> them out and send them to you. But so far. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's really, and I don't know about your phone, but mine now has this awful notification in the morning that tells you how much time you spent the day before on your oh, device. Right. It's really nosy, intrusive, and quite judgy. Oh. So, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a fan, but I don't know how to turn it off. But somehow oh, yeah. I'm 16% less than some other day. So I guess that's going oh, yeah. in the right direction. But that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite scary when your phone starts doing things that you haven't asked it to do. And it, yeah, well, there's that. Yes, yeah. there, that's a whole other book, I'm sure. Yeah, I, yeah it's really, really frightening what uh, what that phone seems to know. And I saw you, uh, the book, the au pair was on uh, the New York Post, um, Mackenzie Dawson's article, yeah. Best Books of the Week. It's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, anybody who wants just a sure thing, edge of your seat, compulsively readable book that au pair is for you it's uh so tell us a little bit about it i am especially i don't spoil books ever and especially not psychological thriller um but in talk about uh, you know what what people should know about um yeah. about about the twins about um this amazing home that centers around with the book centers around this amazing home and um, yeah. the things that won't spoil anything. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I suppose um, the short answer is um, it's a story <laughs> about a young woman who she is a twin, so she has a twin brother and an older brother. And on the day she and her twin brother were born, their mother died. So she's grown up with that in her family history. Um, and she's never quite felt that she belonged in her family. She's always been a bit teased at school in her village um, and feels a bit of the odd one out. When she's 25 and her father dies, she's sorting through his possessions and she finds a photo from the day she and her twin brother were born and it shows both of her parents posing quite formally with just one baby. Mm. And so this obviously doesn't sit right because she knows she's a twin and it, doesn't, it just doesn't look right. Um, and that, she then embarks on this search. Um, she discovers that her older brother had an au pair um, when he was a very small child. And the au pair was the only other person there that day. In fact, it was the au pair who took this photograph. But she fled on the day that the twins were born. And so um, this young woman sets off to find the au pair and to try and find out why was one of the babies missing from this photo, what really happened that day. And, um, and then that starts unraveling this whole story of these secrets from um, her parents' generation. So that's, There's nothing that's kind like of the... secrets, right, to drive know, a story. And... Um, and I, you know, as you're telling it, and again, I read it maybe, I think it was in June or July, mm-hmm. and it stuck with me because I, I don't ever try and figure it out. I just want to enjoy the book. Yes. But, of, of course, a piece of you thinks, well, wait, well, how can that be? Yes. Hmm, what can, how is she going to, you know, play this, how will the story play out? And it's so clever and, you know, certainly ran like a, a movie reel through my head and that's you know always becomes a question is this sold when are we going to see it yada yada i mm-hmm. won't do that to you however i will say that it would be a you know movie i'd be first online to see and i'm talking with oh. emma rose her brand new book the au pair is just out visit her site at emma am i pronouncing your last name correctly it's ruth as ruth. In ruth okay yeah. i think emma it comes ruth. I think my, it's, yeah, it's even easier my, yes yeah <laughs> 
when I first met my husband before before we were married, obviously, I um, I used to pronounce it Rouse myself, but apparently yeah. it comes from his red-haired ancestors who were French, so it's from Rouge. That is so funny. So it is Emma Roos dot com yeah. R O U S dot com, and you can find her on. Instagram, Twitter, not- and send notifications through Facebook. I, re- I think I sent you a message early on saying how much I loved it. I was so excited. Um, it now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I was one of those notifications there. And <laughs> it's just, it's so clever. And it is, um, I just marvel at at, I don't know the process. Like so, you like you were saying. So you were a veterinarian for all these years. You always wanted to write. You were a storyteller. So how did this story take hold? You know, were you at the office one day performing surgery on a kitty cat or something? So I worked as a vet, and I worked in the same practice. You can't say I'm sickle. I was. Um, I you know. I started in my new graduate job, and I stayed there for more than eighteen years. That's um, amazing. Which is quite rare. Yes. And um, and I. Um, I worked full time for a few years, and then I had my first child, and then I went part time. And mm-hmm. I think for that first maybe five years or so, I was very—I just lived and slept and breathed the job. Um, and I think there were some middle years where I—I um, I moved away from the real kind of high pressure, wanting to throw myself into doing complex surgical operations every day, mm-hmm. and moved more into the consulting side of it, where you'd. Um, see someone new every 10 minutes and then each member of the public you see most people when they go to the vets with their pets they're worried about something so you're seeing sure. people when they're quite you know emotional um and and that they might be worried about um money or worried that their animal's going to misbehave it's not necessarily that worried about the animal's health but obviously there's a big part of that as well of and course. then there were times i think as i got older that i started the, the part of the job that i enjoyed most wasn't the cutting edge dramatic surgery side but it was the talking to people and getting to know people and of course you have clients who come back in month in month out for years and you in some ways often it was very busy but when you had the time hearing people's stories and just realizing that there's this whole world out there of all these interesting people who have all these fascinating lives and I loved that and I think at the same time my kind of lifelong desire to write had always been bubbling along, but that started growing. And I had a few years before I left the vet job where I I kind of kept thinking I ought to be able to do both. I ought to be able to work as a vet on a Monday, write on a Tuesday, work as a vet on a Wednesday, write on a Thursday. And I know lots of other people managed to do that with their jobs. And I just couldn't do it. I just, because I was being a mum as well, I just couldn't do those three things in one week. And in the end, it got to the stage where um, I was incredibly lucky um, to have the support of my husband, because obviously when you start writing, if you want to sit down and write a novel full time, you do need that financial backing. Sure. Um, to just say, actually, I'm going to stop the vet job, stop the paid work, sit down, wow. write full time for a year or two, and see if I can make it work. And obviously, in the long term, if I can't, I'll have to go back and, and start earning money again. But that that was how it came about. So I didn't start writing the story until I stopped everything else. Wow, that's amazing, mom, that's Emma. It. Yeah. yeah so, so that's, and I think I, I know other people can juggle more, but I couldn't. I had to. Oh, you are more. juggling so much. You've got, you've got three sons, a husband, and a, and a full time job being a vet. I, I think, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry I can't do more. No, that's, it's, it's amazing. But like you say, to have that um, be available to you, because I can't imagine, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people that can't imagine having three children, a husband, and a full time job even or a part-time job, but one that takes the kind of focus and care and expertise of, of taking care of animals. I mean, that right there, that's just mind-boggling yeah. to me. And we revere well, no, our vet I was vet quite part-time so towards the end, but it is, it's a very – I mean, I, I'm absolutely full of respect for all my vet friends who continue doing the job. And, you know, it really does – well, certainly with me, I, I would – lose sleep over patients that I was worried about sure. and I think that that actually helps keep the book thing in perspective now because I think yeah what's the worst that can happen if someone <laughs> and they don't like it and they give me a one-star review and they you know sleep, I, yeah. you know what? I might be disappointed but I, I my conscience is clear I haven't I haven't yeah. amputated the, the wrong limb or <laughs> that is an amazing perspective to have and I think that that's one of the things that people lose sight of when I don't know people are young maybe in your rush to feel so bruised about certain things but when you have the perspective of what are we talking about here i mean it's it's your work it's 
it's incredibly personal, really. All of that is so true. And it's, you know, I, I've said to my husband before when he's, like, rushing to do something, I'm like, you're not a brain surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you are a vet, you are, actually. But, you know, when yeah. you're – so anything short of life and death has a different perspective. But um, yeah. I hope you keep that sunny disposition as people – as readers are just – readers are I, – I love my readers, and I've been doing this for a long time, but it is always mind-boggling to me when I read what people write about all sorts of books. I think, like, why don't you try it? Let's see how you I know, see. I know. It's such a – it's an amazingly difficult, precise um, work, piece of work, and it's uh, and your book. I mean, if anybody has anything to say about it that you don't care for, you send them to me because the pair is at the I top will, of like. You. You're welcome. Like so many of my lists, I've been sharing it with everybody. I think we did a galley giveaway, and we will have a finished book um, giveaway when this Brilliant. when the podcast as the podcast airs. I'm thrilled, and I. I won't ask too much about the next book, but I will be nudging you until I see it. Because is there a, is there a pub date for it? While I'm not nudging you, um, not like two a years? one yet. Okay. No, I can't say with that. But it's no, it, no. it's a, a very strong work in progress. I'm very happy with the way it's going. Uh, so yes, it, well, in due course, it will start appearing. Emma, I love it already. I know. It's like, what have you done for me lately? Love the au pair. What's next? I mean, my, I know the reading with Robin Gang is just going to gobble this up like I did. Oh. And it's such, it's just a treat. It's fabulous. My copy is beyond well loved. I'll post a picture of what this copy. I'd love to see that. Thank yeah. You. I'll, it's I'll, lovely to see, actually, when, the, when you see that sort of oh. you know, dogged and battered and creased. It's a, and it is fantastic. <laughs> It is it is like summer filled battered. That's what it looks like. Oh, it looks like, like I love it well. Like, like seeing a muddy dog, really. You know the house. Oh. <laughs> Do you now see? Well, a muddy dog. I know. You know when I see muddy dogs and people post pictures, I'm like, that's what looks so happy and so muddy. Yeah, exactly. But all I think is. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a cleaning station in my garage for before we come in the house. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, right to the bath. Um, but no, there's nothing like a muddy, happy dog or yeah. a messy looking child. And that is very true. And that's what my, my yeah. book looks like. And it's The Au Pair by Emma Ruth. And Emma, what have you read that you've enjoyed lately, if you've had time to squeeze in a book? Yeah, no, do you know, I, I haven't had anywhere near as much time as I want, and I'm desperate I to have a month where I can just read books every day and do nothing else, um, <laughs> which I'm planning when I finish writing book two. I want to have a month where I just read every day. I might love that. Um, but um, recently I've read things like um, Louise Candlish's book, Our House, which I thought was fantastic. Oh, um, good. I've, I've just finished it. reading C.J. Sanson's Tombland, which is the – the latest in the Matthew Shardlake series, which I just I absolutely love. That's historical fiction. Yeah. Um, and um, I've read um, Jane Harper's The Dry. Not so so long you're ago. getting it in there. You're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And are your yeah. are your children are your children readers? Are your sons they, readers? Yes, they yeah. really are. Thankfully, because my husband isn't particularly. Um, Mine either. You know what I'm saying. No, it's yeah, funny, isn't it? Either. And I, yeah. and I, with three boys, I didn't really know because they're quite. They take after him in lots of ways, um, yeah. lots of other ways. But they are all three bookworms, actually. So probably love especially it. the middle one. Aww. So I love that. I, I love the stages where my middle son, especially. I can remember the first time he read, an Agatha Christie. Agatha uh. Christie. I think it was. Um, it, well, it was a, an Hercule Poirot mystery. I can't remember which one. And it, where he, he sort of came to me afterwards and said. He lined up all the suspects and then he went through their, you know, alibis <laughs> one by one and said why they didn't work. And it, it just, oh, I love wow. that discussing the books with the children. It's great. Isn't that an amazing memory though? And to see, you know, when they get that sense of oh, this is what reading does, and and yes. these are books, and then the ones that you want to suggest or share yeah. or read at the same time and all that. Yeah, that yeah, it, that is a really that. special moment. Like, oh, yes. I'm so glad I had you. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, that's what, like the so, children become worth it when they can read the same stories. That you, you know, enjoy there are a lot of wonderful things to look forward to, and that's definitely one of them. Yeah, is, yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, they're just that realization of what it brings, and and when they want more and more, and when they're busy reading, and they're so excited, <laughs> they're so quiet, <laughs> yeah, busy reading, lovely. not with with muddy paws, and. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to thank you so much. I'm looking forward to watching this book soar and, and everybody writing about what they think and, and sharing more about the au pair. I will be 
doing plenty of that on Reading with Robin. And I wish you all the best and just enjoy it. It's thank you very much. I, I intend to try to enjoy every minute of it, so thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Robin. It was lovely to talk to you.